Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. I want you guys, I want you to listen to the sweet, sweet spirit that's in our little church family. Every single one has such a sweet spirit. Listen to them as they share, as we discuss the message that was preached uh, prior to this. God bless you as you enjoy. I hope it does something for you. Some people, if it's not explosions and booms and bams, they're not interested. They want to go on to something more exciting. But if you just pick up on the sweet, loving spirit that's in our group, that's what I wish was in every church. Wow. The Lord really is. Um, he's just hurting with his children. He's hurting for his children and with his children to see his children go through what they're going through and wants to really love on us. And, and then hopefully we take the time to really embrace that love. Right. It says, how many are there who hear my word, who have become great analyzers and who nonetheless are not the best of my disciples in practicing my doctrine and who do not fulfill the divine precept, which tells you love one another. In contrast, see how easily he who puts into practice even an atom of my teachings is transformed. Do you want an example? One who during his lifetime had been telling me he loved me through recited prayers formed by others in sentences that he did not even understand because they were made up of words he did not know. One day suddenly understood the true way to pray and putting aside his old habits and concentrating in the depths of his being, raised his thoughts to God. And for the first time he felt his presence. He did not know what to say to his Lord. And from his chest came forth sobs and from his eyes, tears fell. In his mind, there was only a single thought, which was, my father, what can I say to you since I do not know how to speak to you? But those tears, those sobs, that inner joy, and even his turmoil spoke to the father in a language so beautiful that it's like, that it's like cannot ever be found in any of your human languages nor in any of your books. Those stuttered words of that man who began to pray to his Lord spiritually were like the first words of a child, charming and delightful to its parents, for they are hearing the first expressions of a being beginning to arise into life. But I mean, like when I read this, like when, when, when I read that, it says my father, like I do not, even know how to pray to you like that's exactly what what i went through you know like but even in that moment of uncertainty and even when you're thinking you're insufficient like this having thoughts of god like he delights in it so much you know yeah so even in these little things like when you feel like you're just not enough like understand that god even in just a moment's glance at him and your spirit even if it's just for one second he delights in it Wow. Praise be to God. Wow. That was heavy. That was beautiful. Um, I was fighting the tears when you were saying that because some of the most profound answers to prayer were to some of the shortest, teary-eyed, heartfelt moans that I shared with God. And there's something about that transparency that does a lot, that really grabs, I mean, literally grabs God's attention, that an eloquent prayer oftentimes loses. And that's where I think the Lord, like, wants us to know, like, it's that truth, it's that rawness and that realness. Like, he already knows before, he already knows it already, but it's that truth. That when we pour it out to the Lord, no matter how dirty, how ugly, how whatever, it's that truth is that sets us free. And that's why he tells us the truth sets us free. Because once we release that to him, then he can, then he can clean it up. Then he can begin the healing. And then he can begin, you know, the deliverance or whatever it is that's needed in that moment. Yes. But 
until we release it, we're still holding on to it. Right. 